Hey everyone, welcome back and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to take a look at the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML120L Liquid Cooler. It's an AIO cooler, 120mm fan and radiator and the reason that we're going to be taking a look at this is that a while back a friend of mine uh, bought this for his system and for some reason the system did not work at all when, when this thing was attached to it and then lately about a couple of months ago uh, he did upgrade from an FX4300 processor I think it was to the FX8350 and when we try to put this thing back on there there was no response from the system it would not boot up at all whatsoever it was kind of strange and we even like swapped out CPUs to uh, check different uh, fan header configurations like nothing would work with this one so I asked him hey can I go ahead and borrow this for like you know a couple days and test it out he's like yeah sure why not so here we go we're gonna be using this on the Intel test bench and the reason why is that this thing has an air cooler from Zalman which uh, is not bolted down to the actual uh, processor or the motherboard itself. The reason why is that there are a couple of Intel processors that I do use on this system and I gotta swap them out so just to make it easier on myself I, I go ahead and and not tie down the cooler to the motherboard. It works fine for me I haven't had any problems with that at all. We're gonna go ahead and take the motherboard off the test bench we're gonna go ahead and wipe off all that thermal compound off of that processor so we can go ahead and put the water cooler on it and see if it works. When it comes to the processor that we'll be testing it out with will be the Intel Core i3-4130. Nothing major, just the last CPU that I had on this system. Let's go and open up the box for the cooler and see what's inside. And since we did go back and forth a couple of times, what he did and I did when we were putting things together and upgrading his system, it's not going to be really neat inside. It's going to get a little bit messy. What we got to do is we got to go ahead and put the proper brackets on the cooler so it would fit the Intel system. And right now we do have the old ones from his AMD system that we tried it on, so we got to take off those brackets and put the ones for the Intel configuration so we can make sure it does fit onto the Intel motherboard. And we do have to read the instructions. The reason why is that this cooler is very versatile. It does fit different types of systems, both AMD and Intel. And even on the Intel side, there are like four different sockets. Uh, the spacing is different, so this one you just got to take a look and see and, and carefully read the instructions, making sure that you are going to go ahead and mount it correctly so that way the cooler does work the way it should. When it comes to thermal compound, I don't use too much. I use like the, uh, the, the grain of rice method, which a lot of people do also use. I've seen videos online where people would just put so much on there and just they just drench it and smear it and all that kind of stuff. I mean, for me, this method works. It's been working for, for many, many years, just a small little drop. So that way, when you put the cooler on top and push it down, it'll kind of like evenly flatten and spread the way it should. When it comes to tightening up the actual like like nuts onto like those screws for, for the bracket to hold it onto the motherboard, I'm just hand tightening it, not using a screwdriver at all. This, should, this is going to be sufficient, will not give us any problems. Now once everything is uh, put together, I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the test bench. Put a basic GPU, which is the GTX 750 Ti, because it doesn't require external power, just let it feed, out, feed it off of the motherboard. Now if you look at it, it doesn't look very stable, but thankfully I don't live in California, at least I used to, but not anymore, so there's no earthquakes, it won't topple over. I'm fully aware of my environment, you know, aware of it to where I know that it will not be knocked down. And if it does get knocked down, that is totally my fault, but I think <laughs> it's going to be just fine. So here is the true test. We're going to go ahead and, and power it on and see if it will boot up. And, and it seems like it is. So it's booting up just fine. Now on his system with the AMD build that we tested it on, he tested it on his end when he first got it. And then afterwards when he came over to so we can upgrade his processor, the, the overall system would not boot up at all. We, we, we troubleshot that thing like, like crazy. It was just insane. But here on the Intel uh, setup, it's working just fine. So I can't, I don't know if it's his motherboard configuration or what, I haven't really looked into it, but I, I can confirm that it is working. At least with this system, it, temperatures are fine and idle. Uh, I, I think it's, it's good to go. Uh, so what I wanna do is just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and run a benchmark tool. I'm gonna go ahead and put Cinebench on this and run it and see if it does its job. And with Cinebench running, we can see that the temperatures are going up slightly, but the cooler is doing its job by keeping the processor cooler. And I can see that we're averaging around, uh, what, like 40 to 50, 45 to 50 degrees Celsius, which is not too bad. It is just a dual core processor. It's not overclocked or anything. 
but even then these temperatures are pretty fantastic. And that's about it. There's not much else to uh, discuss, I guess. Um, everything worked out the way I wanted it to. It's uh, it's running. Doesn't have any sort of defects. So I'm gonna go and let him know and bring this back to him so he can use it on whatever build he wants to later on. He just recently upgraded as well to a brand new system, so maybe he'll be able to use it on the new one. We'll find out anyways. I do want to thank you for watching. Take care and have a great day.